Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, what do I need to do? Uh, one and all. Welcome to Thursday night's uh, tuition. So, welcome you students. Hope you've all got your pens, pencils, and something to write on. And uh, coffee. No, it'd be a beer, won't it? Or a scotch. Something no, like that. Coffee. Oh, you've got coffee. Right. Well, you can hear voices in the background. Let me pop up the uh, two uh, ear maggots. <laughs> My maggot. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> maggot. Hey, maggot. Two ear maggots. Yeah. He, he's only jealous, Brian. That's what it is. Yeah. I, I think it is, yeah. Uh, yeah we've heard, you him. Find good looks. we've heard about him. <laughs> yeah, you've got you got Scott the light blue turner and you've got Brian at brainless turning. Brainless turning. <laughs> mm. uh, right, I'll stick you guys in the background and uh, what we're doing tonight, guys, is we're gonna do a bit of spindle work. Stand in front of the camera or move the camera. Camera. Don't want to move. Okay, I'll stand in front of the camera. Um we're going to do a bit of spindle work tonight, so it'll be spindle what? gouge and something else like that. And um, we'll finish off with um, a little project at the end, so you can see how it transposes from trial and error and practice right the way through to a finished, well, hopefully a finished product. Just a quickie before we go, essential glasses. You can, oh. if you wear glasses, get prescription glasses. And if you do go for prescription glasses, make sure you've got the little side cheeks in there. And then they are, you are covered on insurances from various bits and pieces. If not, UVEX do a really good set of safety glasses that are comfortable that go over your normal glasses. Yeah, I can say there are two or three out there that do it, but uh, there's one that's not very comfortable. Um, the arms are about twice, if not three times the size of a normal arm, and uh, they're not the most comfortable thing to wear, but uh, it's better than a brick or a lump of shaving in your eye, going blind, having to go to the... Uh, hospital just to get them to drag it out which isn't fun if it's wood so i'm going to change camera now i need to be on well, while you're sorting yourself out like let us know who's in so we have uh mike you gerard french turner um some fat bloke called the blue light turner die prout watch him <laughs> Walking Owls, John S, uh, Woofy Woodshed, uh, Wood Wizardry by Colin, Midnight Joker Mike, Andy H, uh, Steve Scott, uh, Hodgepodge. Brian's escaped. <laughs> yeah, I've not escaped. <laughs> Manacles <laughs> broken wavy. again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wavy woodshed then. Um, James Pete, Cassidy. Pete's in. Yeah, Pete's in, I've seen. Yeah, Pete yeah, Cassidy. Yeah, yeah. yeah so we've Gartman. got two club members in at the moment, Pete, Kelly and Andy H. So welcome, guys. It's nice that some people are uh, supporting the club. So, right, I'll take over for a minute. I think you can see that in the middle of the screen. Uh, it's a bit of inch and a quarter square. All I've done is mounted it on a four, four prong drive and a revolting center so that it just spins. So we're gonna rough that down to round. It's nothing special. There's a big knot there, which goes through. There's a little knot emerging there there's a knot across that end and the grain is quite straight that way and quite straight that way apart from the bits that bend all over the place so i'm going to turn the dust extractor on which shouldn't 
detract. Crispin oh, with yeah. Dodgers in. Uh, yes. Duncan the Demon Barber. Oh. Did we mention James Cassidy? Oh, I think yeah, he's we in. mentioned James. Yep. Um, That's about everyone. We've got 30 watching currently, so that's quite a good start. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll just, if it's right with you, Dad, I'll just do a quick announcement. Oh, I don't see why um, not. Let me just uh, make an observation first. I always knock in the corners off, put my hand over the top of the spindle roughing gouge, only to save the splinters hitting the bottom of the uh, flute and springing up at me. Once I've got it round, I will then, or close on round, I will then use the wing as a skew. It's not the best tool rest, this one, but it's a long one. So, uh, yeah, go on, mate. Make, make your announcement. So, yeah, so Douglas Mungham is in. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, my original channel, The Blue Light Turner, got deleted. Um, I'm starting afresh. So if you haven't already, um, I'll pop the scri uh, link in for my new channel. If you could go over and subscribe to that, it'd be really appreciated. There are just going to be videos for the time being. Um, hopefully. Which is why I'm doing Thursday nights at the moment. Yeah. I heard from Axminster today. Um, I know what was up with my lathe. Right. Um, so they Operator are sending... Error. No, the control board in the box had gone. Okay. Um, so them bits should be winging their way back to me. Mm -hmm. And then... The first project is going to be a solitaire board. No, oh, a load of balls. I found a load of marbles, so yeah, let's make one. They're the, one, they're the ones you've been missing for some time. Yeah, right. and they're blue. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well. We got full volume on the lay, so all I'm going to do is make a simple bead. It's just a matter of rolling. The spindle gouge over. And there we have. Hopefully, Andy, that is the plan. A simple bead. Uh, I love doesn't, wood turning Adam is in. Yeah, it doesn't really want any sanding because the bevel's been on. If I did touch it, it would only be something like 240. So you can, it's good practice, just run along. Make yourself a, a few beads. He's making them toys again, Brian. Yeah. He's, he's not, is he? Oh, no. Yeah. I yeah. think Ann Summers have been on the phone. Yeah, they got <laughs> they stuck an order in. Hi, Mark. Evening, Mark. And, and hi, everyone else that's uh, uh, in the chat. Andy Slim Best. That's a new name on me. That's, Good evening. There's a new name on me, too. Welcome, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't recognise that one. <laughs> uh, I think Gav's, Gav's having a little bit of trouble at home there. <laughs> he says... Uh, Everyone wants my attention when the lives are on. Yeah. I, ter I turn my phone off and start the workshop. Yeah. I turn a two-foot spindle with a spindle roughing gauge and didn't see the need for sanding. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Like I say, these, because the, r the wood is really rough and horrible and well, you can see the, see the grain, so you've got a good eighth inch three mil growing ring on there and it's just a bit of scrappy old pallet wood not even the best quality pallet wood so 
Are you saying you've got cheap and nasty wood in your workshop, Keith? Yep. <laughs> yep. It's what we made. Generally make the... Uh, yeah, generally make the kids toys out of what we've been doing down the museum. Why spend good money on wood that you're going to make? Probably 75%, if not not more, into shavings. Uh, uh, Jiggy Shed's joined. Evening, Jiggy. Hi, Jiggy. Uh, Evening, Jiggy. He has he to said, work yeah. now. His kids are in bed, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Paul Smith's in. Evening, Paul. Hello, Paul. So you Evening, can do Paul. whatever size you like. Um, this is with a little... 10 mil spindle gouge. So James Cassie's saying, talking marbles, he did have a project for them. Notice yeah. they were not cheap on eBay. And whilst in France, brought a small, full suitcase full of them for a fiver. Bargain. Yeah. Yeah, these these were my boys. He was going to throw them out. And I went, don't throw them out. I'll do something with them. So I'll go oh, over to a half that. inch spindle gouge now. We can do exactly the same. All my... Spindle gouges, bowl gouges, they're all ground to the same angle. Just about see the angle on there. But I've also got a relief cut on the back so that I can get down tighter. So, we're just making a few... Neil M has joined. Hello, Neil. Hello, Neil. A few beads. So, the next thing would be a cove if you go down each side you don't yeah, you don't good, do what some of Mark. them do yeah you just plough straight in oh there's a nice cove you've got to sand that one you probably get rid of most of the tear out if you go in right you can do a row of coves like I say, this is a really good wood that I've given myself to play with here. Mark's saying that um, Jennifer's feeling a lot better, which is good news. Good. Uh, we have been invaded by Barry. Oh, the bears. Um, what, was, what was the channel crossing like tonight, mate? Was it a bit Ger lumpy? Gerard's got a question. He says, how do you shape that relief edge on the gouge? So the second bevel. You grind it at that angle. You see it on there. And yes. while the yeah, while the tool is while the um stone is running down or the belt's running down, just take it off, lift it up so that it's further up the stone, and just put the just twist it like that. Helps slow the stone down. Doesn't do anything apart from making it easier to get in coves um if you use as i do sometimes in a bowl if it's a smaller bowl you can actually get round without digging the heel in it's uh, a useful way of doing it a lot of the the pros do it this is how bad this wood is it's just chipping out on the top but i've got a nice clean cove uh, uh, Tommy's workshop. go on Tommy's workshop's joined. Yeah, good. Hi, Tommy. Basically, that's all spindle turning is. It's, it's a row of beads and a row of coves joined up with straight lines. So the transition from a cove to a bead, you always put a squint in there. So you've got a little flat area before you transition to the bead and all the cove shall we say on there and if that was going to be a bead you would uh, hi daniel there, there would be the bead but there's a transition point between the two
which isn't normally very big right on top of a knot there which doesn't worry me too much so there is a row of row of beads don't look at the tear out because like i say it's really rubbish wood um but the actual right, beads, see them, yeah. the beads are clean the coves are clean the transition squints on the top there so you you don't have one cove into another cove into another cove or whatever or the cove into the bead you just put a little squint there it just breaks it and gives you a line if i was steve jones i'd be doing all this with a spin with a skew but think yourself lucky i'm not steve jones because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'd have finished them. yeah you'd have finished this and another dozen as well and they'll all match up the same uh, they put a, a bead over top of that those pair of knots doesn't matter where there's knots there the chisel's sharp you can... a bead is the most decorative part of spindle turning whereas a cove is just a relief really It's all start fully open, roll the spindle gouge in, come back to the top, roll it in. So I'm finishing virtually closed. Start fully open, round to the side, fully fully closed on the side, back to the top, roll it over fully closed down the side there and you've got a little bit one-sided that one but, uh, a reasonable bead uh, it's as simple or shall we say as technical as that good practice just by sticking a log in there squaring it off and running a few down there so let's go and put that into practice and turn something so let me find come on let me find a different camera and i want to go above which should be number two how about that hey, look that. at that yeah look at that that growth in as well yeah <laughs> yeah <bloody> incredible <laughs> right so what have i got on here i've got a lump of oak that is sort of three and a half inch square and at the moment it's seven and a half inches long it's going to finish a bit shorter than that because obviously i need to hold it at the moment i've just popped the ends there's a little prick in the end with a, a point just so that it was in <laughs> now the little prick's laughing now no, the little prick's trying to be on the life <laughs> <laughs> this is a big prick <laughs> so you, you can oh, you can, oh there's no size now is it <laughs> yeah you, you can you can check the um concentricity of it and see if it's squarish because you can check the gap along the tool rest and it spins there so all i need to do now is just turn up the volume on the tailstock and lock it in there's a dad can yeah. i put li can i put linikins in the corner she's late no you better not she had to you put rosie not. in the bath uh, she all tried, right hadn't yeah. Mm. He's jumping. Well, better, better late than never, Lennigans. That's all yeah. I can say. Yeah, I've only, I'm only um, 20 minutes in, so you're not too bad. Right, so I'm going to I'm gonna rough this down to round, change dust extractors, and stick the noisy one on. 
20 uh, minutes in and 47 watching. Very good. Oh, welcome, oh. guys. Hope you're all prepared with your uh, pencils and paper and uh, notepads. So, oh. again, hand over the top just to stop the chips flying off. Door 60's in. Uh, Hello, okay. door. Evening, door. And the, uh, once I'm down a bit, I can... got more control problem is this tool rest is horrible because there's a massive you can just about see it there massive nobule sticking out the side so generally you've got to attack it from both ends a 10 foot bower yeah that, that's the that's the comment i just looked at and then when she said yeah. that she put rosie in the bath as she'd badly shed I, I wonder what we're talking about, but it's a 10 foot boa. Mm. <laughs> Snake's not my favourite thing, I would think. Right there. <laughs> I'm not a fan of snakes. No, no, no. Not me neither. No. But each to their own. We went to a patient's house once. Um, and they said, oh, we put the dog away. So, all right. Didn't think anything of it. <laughs> Next thing you know, there's this python slithering off the car. I was out of the room, mate. I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you want treating, the ambulance is outside. Yeah. <laughs> the animals aren't. <laughs> uh, right. What have we got? Lionel's this is in. a real... Hello, Lionel. This is not a really old piece of oak. There is a massive split down this end. You can just see the top of it there. Actually, that's not a bad picture. And the bottom has got splits and shakes and various crap bits all over the place. So the bottom is going to be chuck end. So all I'm going to do, and I know the maximum depth is this bidan plus another four mil. So I'm, I'm going in the width of the bidan, use it as a parting chisel just to get rid of the, the wood. <laughs> we probably need two attempts. <laughs> Lynn says, just you turn in and don't say wood. <laughs> It was going to be he a banana, but that's all right. You're not paying attention. I think you should make a candlestick. It's obviously one of these quizzes. Can you guess what it is yet? <laughs> Abscess, part of the tree limb. <laughs> Bit of oak. <laughs> Something that came out of an acorn. <laughs> yeah, the optimum size is that. And that's not a bad guess. So it's an optimum size to fit the jaws on the chucky. Uh, Some of us mere mortals have to measure. Uh, well, it's a lot easier if you've got the dividers preset. So I'm just using the center of the chuck, so it's a step center that fits into a chuck, which makes life a lot easier because this chuck doesn't like coming off that easy because it's a two-handed job at times. It's not the world's best design. So see see how close we are to centre. Well, that's absolutely spot on. Well, that's what I'm telling you guys anyway. Uh, <laughs> nice and tight as it's oak. Because this ben is all going to be in. unsupported turning. Hi, Ben. Evening, can't Ben. Call this. It's a bit late, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Gab's yeah. saying uh, nice bowl today, Brian. Oh, thank North you very North much, Gab. Yeah. Right. Oi. Yep, we're uh, 
52 watching now. Oh, my goodness. Well, if you will come in for this punishment, get rid of the centre. I have a purpose-made drill. It's a speed bit. I've ground the ends off or the sides off so that it's tapered because candle cups are tapered. So that gives you a clue as to what I'm doing. Oh, you give it away. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> to hell with the expense. <laughs> right, turn the speed down. Although it's a high speed, let it centre. I've got a drill bit like that somewhere. Yeah, once it's centred, you can increase the volume a bit because it is a is for high speed drilling. So. Uh, I want to come up to about my finger in depth. Uh, nice steady speed. Oak's a nice one to drill in grain like this. Nice, very thin shavings coming out of it. Did I deafen anybody? Nope. We're all good. Get rid of that as an hour arm stabber. That's just a normal inch inch bit for the smaller ones. I've got a 22 that I've done exactly the same. Ground off the wings so that I got a taper in there. So theoretically, that fits. It's a little bit slack. But what I need to do... That's a French fit in, isn't it? <laughs> Toulouse. <laughs> I'm going Kev, to... Careful, careful what you're saying. There's lots of French people uh, oh, in no. the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Labaz. Yeah. No, I just loved. I can't speak yeah. French. Da Daniel Dubois talking in French as well here. And, oh. yeah. Right. Well, well, I, right can't in French. I don't want to say it in the, front, in the uh, chat. <laughs> okay, now I want to dish this top. Not a lot, but just enough to hide the the brass candle cup and if anyone makes candles now and sells them or puts them up for sale you must have a candle cup in them if you want to sell them so i need to go a little bit deeper then i need to get the drill back out again i love the way that youtube recognizes french swear words yeah Some of that noise is because I've got seven and a half inches hanging over the end there. Uh, we're not worried about that. I'm only taking very fine pull cut off of that. And just to refine the top. Let's put the drill bit back in. Go a tad deeper. The candle cup. Uh, Colin has got a question. When using intrinsic dyes, can you put more coats on to make it darker? I believe that is the case. Um, I'm still playing with my intrinsic colours at the moment and learning with them. Uh, I did today when I added, uh, I was adding uh, colours to the bowl I done today, and the first coat of, of the red wasn't Ideal. very dark. The second coat was a bit darker, so it does get darker the more you add. Right. Yeah, the first, the first coat of red looks a bit pink when you put it on, doesn't it? It does sometimes, yeah. It depends on the wood underneath, of course. But um, on the second one, second one I did today, it was it was really pale. 
that's quite a nice finish on the top there, even though it sounded crap. But I've just got to get down below that split. So I'm going to lose about half inch off the top of this. Hey ho. But I think what I will do is I'll just put the tail stock in, the revolting centre in, just to give it a little bit of support. Let's use the big baby. I'm not a big baby. <laughs> not what I've heard. No comment. Exactly. Nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gerard, the French turner, says he's forgetting French after 40 years in Ireland. Now he's Dutch, is he now? So an another thing that uh, a lot of beginner turners do, they push with this front hand. Once you've got your cut established, that hand doesn't need to be there. If it's there, it's literally holding the tool down. And you can see when people are pushing because they get to the end of the cut and all of a sudden, they push it off, and it tears out, leaves a horrible end, as possibly demonstrated here. Yeah, it's torn it off there. Nice cut down to it. Then the last bit, when I pushed it off, but the other thing is, when, you're, when you push with the front hand, you're not letting the chisel do the work and you're not letting the, bev the bevel ride on the wood. This hand is literally stopping it bouncing up and down. There's no weight on it. It doesn't need to be there. Bit of rough wood in there. I just need to hold it, stop it bouncing on the grain as much as anything. So, another thing to remember when you're uh, munching away at the wood. Am I not quite? How much further has that got to go? Oh, I'll never get there. That's going to be that's going to be super glued later on. So that's okay. That's not a major problem. We oh, we're not having a CA finish. No, not a CA finish. <laughs> Don't start uh, that again. <laughs> Me? I'm a good boy. Yeah. When I'm asleep. Even then, sometimes. Yeah, you don't know what I'm dreaming about. Thank you, Douglas. I appreciate that. Apologies for missing your live earlier on, Bron. Well, well, apologies not, chap. He's get out of bed and get watching. I mean, goodness <laughs> sake. Catch up, I, catch up, I didn't you? see it either. I was out busy sorting the car out. Oh. I, was, I was only just getting up. <laughs> yeah, well, we... I did start We're early today. Of course, I, start, I started I a little leave, bit early. I didn't leave Where's the workshop until I was That one I do. What do you say, Keith? Let's mark the bottom so I know where I'm going to pass it off. Yeah. It was at half past four before I walked out of the workshop this morning. Uh -huh. I was sound asleep at half past four. Uh, I might have been in and out of the loo a couple of times by then. Right. I, was, I was cutting bunny rabbits. I don't oh. want to make this bottom too small. It's not going to be a tall candlestick. But it still needs stability and weight at the bottom. Oh, not a good idea to have candles falling over. Absolutely. No, no. So, I don't know what. I can say it's a nice rustic bit of oak. It actually come from a church around here. It was part of their lich gate. 
bloody thing uh, fell over after I took it out. Uh, Scott, can you feel? Can you feel link in there for my uh, uh, channel? I am on it. Good man. Uh, James, I didn't have a light today. Me. Half past twelve today. It was on. Oh, I don't want to go too, too heavy. I just want to get. Uh, still got the Seth. Seth, I just arrived go. from Brickhouse Craftworks. Hi, huh? Seth. Hi, Seth. So there is a link for Brian's channel. I wonder why that doesn't come up with my URL. I don't know. Hmm. I'm going to find a chisel that's sharp. <gasps> turning was a day. turning yeah. was a blunt chisel. Oh God! What next? Um, <laughs> this one's got a bit of an edge on it. It's a bit small though. And those that you weren't here at the beginning that missed it, um, I've got a new channel. The Blue Light Turner channel doesn't yeah, exist no anymore. Better. Um, so this is the link to my new channel. Starting afresh. It's not called that, is it? No, it's called the Blue Light Turner's Workshop. It's really original, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, another one. Let's see if this one. This one counts a bit better. I didn't want to lose the blue light turner because that's me. Um, it was a nickname given to me by people at work. It was going to be the red nose turner, but uh, he opted for blue light instead. <laughs> well, I was going to go red light, but then I thought, oh, that sounds a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it definitely does. Yeah. Color in this. But that's what we're turning with is a massive knot just there. Uh, thanks, Colin. Oh, I know someone who will be uh, watching this with uh, eagle eyes, Mr. Kelly. Was that over today and? Uh, Thieved a load of wood off of me <laughs> to make two more, two matching ones. They'll be matching, but they won't match. They won't look the same. Now I've got to remember that I've got an inch hole down here. Oh, thanks, Peter Kelly. Another subscriber for me. That's very nice. Well done, Pete. Cheers, mate. What are you sitting at at the moment, Brian? 168 or 69, somewhere about that. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm a one, 191, I think I'm at. Uh, 190, yeah, you, yeah, you're on 191, Keith. Yep. If anyone's not subscribed to me, if they would be good enough to subscribe to me, I would really appreciate that. Ah. Not being forced, but uh, yes, sir. it always, always helps if you can subscribe to our channels. It makes a bit more interest. I'm going to use this spindle and roughing it's support, gouge. It's supporting as, other makers. Yeah, as a skew. <coughs> so. ah. Mark's in. Evening, Mark. Hello, Mark. Which one's that? Gentleman with that. Oh, right. Hi, hi Mark. That's the Mark's the ball of it. Yeah. Too many Marks, too many Steves. At one time, if you're not watching the chat, which I'm not. Yeah, good evening, Mark. Thanks for the other today. Mark, you're wor ear worm for me today. Oh, right. <laughs> because you two boys are obviously otherwise engaged and away somewhere else and doing other oh, things. Like yeah, we sort the car out. Like Sleeping yeah, and fixing cars. Yeah. Yeah, just in case I got called to have me a uh, needle in my arm. I want me to missus, be prepared. My missus brought me up a cup of coffee at eight o'clock and I went, uh, I didn't get into bed till five. What are you doing? She went, you said you wanted to wake at eight. 
What you were supposed to say. What you were supposed to say. Yeah. What you were supposed to do is, oh, thank you, dear, for the cup of tea. I'll be down in a minute. <laughs> and then go down at 12 o'clock. Yeah, I just went back to sleep. You were just right. Right. Just have a gander at this. Uh, Mark saying he can't stay. He's got a members live on. Okay. Whose members you got live on then, Mark? <laughs> That's a very personal question. <laughs> yeah. How's your member, Mark? <laughs> so this is going to be really rustic. Although that side is good. This side is really rustic. Um, am I worried? No. No. There's even Just a, like you, isn't it? Yeah, X branch in there that's uh, healed over, which is why I was getting a little bit of an issue with getting a finish there. Enjoy, dear Worming Brian. Sorry about the one idiot. Yeah. Uh. Never fear, Mark. Never fear. Do you have someone oh. playing up in yours, Brian? Yeah, it was a little bit of uh, nonsense. But uh, best just ignored, I think. Yeah. I would hazard a guess that I could well know who that was then. Yeah, well. Please dead, soonest mended is my motto. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm, get, I'm getting too old, too long in a tooth for any dramas like that, so I just can't. Yep. James has said he's PMG on Facebook, Brian, with a question PM, regards yeah. engravers. All right. I'll have a look at that when I get back in, James. And thanks for your subscription. Ah, perfect. Another one. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. How much did he, uh, are you charge him this time? Can we get well, it to 200 before the end of the night? <laughs> I, <reckon. laughs> I wouldn't Just mind 200 for the end of the night. <laughs> All right, calm down, think, greedy. Yeah, I think that would... Uh, I've only got nine to go. <laughs> I think this you is hand up quite nice. And, uh, let's see if we can get a decent cut across the top there. I have... I have yeah. a brand a brand new sharpened one. I know it's brand new because I tape mine when they're brand new to be sharpened. Uh, uh, I'll make sure to give you a shout out on my next live, Keith, so as we can try and get you up to two hundred. Right, thank you. Uh, I might be when are you next live? Next Thursday. Well, I'm live you, Tuesday. You, you might have made it by then. What difference a sharp chisel makes? I'm not forcing it. I'm just letting it roll across the wood. Go on. We have a question. We have a question in Keith from uh, Benjamin. Have you ever got a sheen from applying finish up? Have you ever got a sheen from a, applying finishing oil? Question mark. I've applied about five coats now. Applying and wiping the excess off after 10 minutes. And it barely looks like I've applied anything. Very matte finish. What wood how, is it? Yeah, what wood is it and how long are you leaving it between one coat to the next? Would be it the, might be that the wood's just sucking it in. Yeah. Have you ever got a sheen from applying the finishing off? Five coats now. I mean... It, <laughs> It needs to cure quite Completely. well before you put the second coat on, uh, same between the second and third. So if you put five coats on, I would think you would probably be um, two days into that. If you're less than that, um, you need to be a little bit more patient, Ben, because they need to cure before you can do anything more with them. Um, 
And they say you can just keep adding, adding to it, but in reality, you can, but it don't, doesn't work if you don't let it cure properly. Which finishing oil was it then? He said it was Sycamore sanded to 400, very smooth and 12 hours between coat. Right. Um, in that case, I would suggest you probably did it in the workshop and the workshop wasn't up to a, um, a good temperature. If you apply oil or any finish in temperatures usually below about 27 I think it says on most tins I haven't got one in handy but I think uh, from what I can remember from Terry saying Terry of Chestnut that you needs to be 27 if you can so what I tend to do is <coughs> this time of year I'll uh, take them indoors and leave them in the kitchen for the, i.e. the wood to warm up a little bit and then put the finish on. So James Cassidy said, if you just ignore those idiots, they go away eventually as you're not feeding their sorry state. Yeah. Totally true. Um, one of my Absolutely. videos is up to 55 thumbs down now. It's brilliant. I love it. All that interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my son have got a bet on on what it can get to. And uh, Lawrence has just joined. Hi, Lawrence. I've just read uh, the back Lawrence. of the uh, Hampshire Sheen Danish oil tin. And yep. It says, leave to cure thoroughly for at least 24 to 48 hours before buffing and um, putting into use. Curing time will vary depending on the amb ambient temperature and humidity. So, uh, just exactly as you said, Keith, you need to yep. keep it in a, a reasonable temperature so it will cure. The colder it is, the longer it will take to cure. So 12 hours might not be enough. And it possibly won't cure to your yeah. satisfaction because of the dampness in the air. When you've got cold air, you've also got damp air. So let's just put a little bead. I think I'm going to exaggerate that a little bit more in there just to break up that. We have another question for you here, Keith. Go on. Um, from Gerard the French Turner. What is the reason for the faint line mark once you've applied wax and buffed it? I always get some no matter how many coats of wax I put on. Yeah, um, try using half the amount of wax. Yep, that's, that, would be my, that would be my answer to less wax yeah. to begin with. Yeah, yeah. So more, build it up in really small mean, coats. Yeah. More wax thin doesn't coats. mean more shine. Yeah, thin coats. Thin, thin coats, and you could have as many coats as you want, really, but just put it on thinly to begin with and add another thin layer after that. So. Thin all through the time, not just to begin with. Yes. I would never, never put uh, wax on heavy. doesn't work. James uh, Casty is offering this advice that there's quite a difference between Hampshire Sheen's Danish oil and Chestnut's finishing oil on uh, the finish. Right. I've never. I've not used um, Hampshire Sheens. No, I usually I've use um, either Mylands or Chestnuts, only because uh, Chestnut we don't do it. Get them. Um, but for the for the scroll saw pictures I'm doing, and I'm only doing them out of three mil birch ply, um, with an oil finish. But what I've done is I found by putting coats on, I wasn't getting the finish I wanted. So I leave them overnight. I've made a bath of oil. Leave them overnight on that. And it makes it work. No, nice and lemony. Uh, what finish can I use with Intrinsics? Uh, they are a water-based. Uh, um, so once you put a sanding sealer over the top of them, any finish you want to. But you don't really want to use a melamine sanding sealy. You need to use a well, spirit-based ones. Yes, so you yeah. want a cellulose. Spirit or cellulose. So we can get a good shine. 
You can use oil over the intrinsic colours as well. Yeah. The initial oil. Almost anything, because they're, basically they're water-based. And... Yeah, I remember watching a demo by uh, Phil Irons at the Chestnut Weekender. Uh, not last, not 2020, 2019. Um, and he put some lacquer on. So a few coats of lacquer on and then use chestnuts burnishing cream over the top. Um, yeah. And that came up with a really nice high gloss finish. You can use burnishing cream on any of them, really. Uh, I'm going to drop the volume down and just give this a lick with 120 to start with as it's oak. I'm not over sanding it. So are we turn in the uh, mortar tube next week, then, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yep. <laughs> That's what you the, like, isn't it? <laughs> the following week, I'm doing the uh, the butt plug just for you. All right. As soon as you ask for it, I give all my secrets away. <laughs> no good telling me it was for the missus. Keep it, keep it clean, guys. We're still be below the watershed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look. It's the way you take it. <laughs> We're 51 minutes in. That's what yeah. I actually said to the bishop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, slightly different shape to what you did, Pete. That, uh, I think it was, well, it is a slightly shorter bit of wood as well. I don't want 400, I want 240. Could be 240 with shavings in it. So. Oh, cramp. Oh. Oh. That's gone. <laughs> cramp or old age? Bit of both. Does every, anyone else get cramp in their fingers at times? Yep. Yeah. Particularly when I'm standing. Yeah. Get the Simon Hope sand in the inertia sander. Nah, I yeah, have it. I have it. I have the thin handled version and the thick handled version just because I've got a bit of arthritis in my fingers. Oh, right. And some, some days I can't grip the small one. Can't hold it. Doesn't look a very nice finish at all. I need to um, get some more of the, the bits that go at the end. I've worn them out. Heavy handed. No, it's just old. No, heavy handed. Ooh. Ooh. No fighting, children. No, I know what he's like. Oh. Heavy, heavy handed. Don't listen to him. Mole Valley's in. Good evening, Mole Valley. Good evening, oh. Mole Valley. <laughs> yes, it is Scott and Brian here with me. Yes. You're yes. correct. Two professional maggots tonight. Yeah. Been dragged out so I'm not so sure about the, the professional, but oh, Huey's in. Oh, Huey, just got up. <laughs> Huey says, "So I arrive as Keith is talking about butt plugs, and then says, it's how you take it.'" <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Good evening, you. Yeah. You're absolutely correct Adam, there, Adam. Um, Martin's videos on finishing are the best to get a proper understanding of the intrinsic colours and the Hampshire Sheen product range. Anybody's yeah. got any questions about these things, go and watch them. And if you um, can, once he starts them again, get on one of his uh, excellent in finishing course. I did it at Hampshire Sheen headquarters 25th February last year. Fantastic morning. Yeah, which is only an hour, about about an hour from us. So we are fairly lucky down here. Two two days, two days of camel riding a taxi for me. Where about are you, Brian? Uh, Northern Ireland. Yeah, best place for him. Um, hey. Careful now, careful. <laughs> I can't travel. Yeah. <laughs> Not at the moment, though. Yeah, well, that's hey. true. Uh, kind of restricted at the moment. Yeah. Although, although talking of talk, we spoke. Somebody mentioned earlier about injections. I'm going for mine on Saturday. Yeah, 
Yep. So I wanted to get the car sorted today so that if I did, if we did get called, we could uh, take them up on it rather than uh, oh, I can't get in because I haven't got a vehicle. So oh, Colin yeah. is saying that Yandels are doing a price drop on their Easywood tools. He's very tempted. Oh, why did you say that? Mold Valley makes the same. Four marks is a bit less than an hour for me. Yeah, I think it took me, took me about 50 minutes the other day when I popped over there to pick something up. Yeah, but you had the blue lights on, didn't you? I didn't. No? No, nope. I'll just drive like you've got them on. I just went cross country, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, James is just, James, James is just commenting there. He says, buying on a horse. <laughs> I don't think I'll be travelling to four marks on one of my horses. I don't think so. No. Uh, More like a unicorn. It fly. So Steve's got his saying his daughter goes for hers tomorrow. Um, for anyone that hasn't had it, make sure you've got paracetamol indoors. Um, it's affecting everyone different, but a lot of people that I've spoken to that have had the Pfizer jab um, are feeling rough after it for a few days. Okay. Yeah. I, I spent three days on the sofa after having mine. It was just like having really yeah, bad that was, that was just a good excuse for you, though, wasn't it? No, nope. mate. It was <laughs> like... You, there's dead arms, and then there's, like, Mike Tyson giving you a dead arm. Lewis, the conversation in. Evening, Lewis. Good evening, Lewis. That's what we're starting with. I'm happy with that. Uh, yeah, Mike... Do I do? Do I? Yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it some Yorkie. Uh, Mike, you saying for those that are waiting in anticipation for their first jab, the centres are really well organised. They are. Mm. Um, yeah, I was watching it on the news. Let's turn the extractor off. Do they advertise that when you go? They tell you that all the symptoms. You get loads of paperwork when you go. <laughs> a bit of uh, nice bit of um, bedtime reading. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you're inclined to bit of toilet reading. All right, this is uh, shellac watered down with meths to give me a two in one. So it's cleaning out the grain with Adam the meths, and what? it's also uh, finishing as well, sealing it for finish. So. Go on, what's Adam asking? Adam's asking what tool rest is that? It looks like a cracking tool rest. Uh, it's good for big stuff. It's a bloody nightmare if you want to get in close to anything because of the knuckle on there. It sticks out just too far. It would be nice if that knuckle wasn't there. But you can Hang get up. in quite close. Well, you can't because the the design is of it... it is it one for that um, lathe? Yeah, it's proper one for the lathe. So if I need to get in really close, I've got a couple of specials that I've had welded up, which work a treat. Jiggy's off. He's got to go home and sort dinner now the wife's home. Okay, see you, Jiggy. Thanks for uh, popping in. Hi, Jiggy. Let's just uh, dry this I've off a bit. About the AstraZeneca. That's the Oxford one. Um. One I of think my it mates. Which centre you go to, isn't it? Uh, one of my Three mates. Kids. Yeah, it's because of the storage. So the Oxford AstraZeneca can just be stored in a normal fridge. Yeah. Um The Pfizer one has to be stored at minus seventy until yeah. it's going to be used. Um, so I think it depends where you are and the facilities they've got yeah. to them. I, I'm getting the Pfizer one on Saturday, but I have to go to the one of the major centres. There's seven centres in Northern Ireland, uh, yeah. basically all based in hospitals. Yeah, because they've got the facilities to do yeah. all that, keep it that. Um, but I've not heard, I've heard people feeling unwell with headaches and fever. But again, paracetamol and bottle of scotch. <laughs> bottle of scotch. Yeah, or body. Not with paracetamol. No. Mm. 
All right, good old Yorkie grit. Yorkshire grit. Good old Yorkie Yorkshire grit. Yorkshire grit. Yorkshire grit. Yorkshire grit. So I've just said it three times, Glenn should appear. Yeah. No, he's busy, isn't he? <laughs> he's, he's working. Um, so Adam's got a question. He says, what does Keith think the holes are for through the rest? I've never had an answer and suspect Keith will know. What, these two in the front? Yeah, probably, because it's the only holes that I can see in it. Uh, those two? Down a bit. Up a bit. One. One there and one there. Hmm. Go on then. What for? Letting the air circulate through it. <laughs> to keep it cool, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So hanging your lunch on. So it's not too far off when you're turning. Well, what did you think they were for? Apart from that, I ain't got a bloody clue. <laughs> Are they fretted or? No, they just drilled through. I think they're casting holes as much as anything. They're not been drilled. There's just rough cast. Right, creep the volume up. That was about 200. Now we're up to about 354. And all of a sudden you can hear and feel the difference in the Yorkie grit. It's not grabbing. It's a lot quieter. Is oh. just need to... Do a couple of passes on that. It's time spent on this is giving me the equivalent of a thousand grip sandpaper. Right. Crank and a bit. Stop. Volume up a bit more. All the risks of the dust. Yeah, the very fine dust. Yeah. So we've got yeah, 16 mate. and we've been going an hour. Good. Well done, guys. Hope you've all brought your notepads and your pens and paper with you so you can take notes. So Mike, Mike you have just said that his uh, his sister got hers in the church in Bangor. Well, that's entirely possible because that's probably run from a GP surgery. I thought they were doing uh, it in your arm, not in the church. In, in his <laughs> <laughs> church, not church. <laughs> oh, not nine o'clock yet. Stop it. Um... Yeah, just as Scott was uh, suggesting there, that's probably the AstraZeneca one that she's got. Clean sheet of paper. Now, gently wipe it in. I cre crept the volume up so that the wax dissipates into the wood a bit. It's not going to go in very far because this is, oh, I think they said close on 100 year. It's been standing as a part of a lich gate. And the wood was probably a couple of hundred years old beforehand it was out of a fairly substantial tree one more pass let's find a clean bit of paper See, if i had mine in the church i'd be there all week for confession yeah and the rest yeah i was so thinking i was thinking a week wouldn't do it scott no uh, hopefully this bit of this pass will come off clean and clear so there's no no residue at all on the paper there now. Uh, I have mine done in the basement of the hospital. That's where they've set it up. <laughs> Perfect place. Mm. Right. We're going straight on top of that. If I can get it open. No, I'm not going to use the skew. They're quite useful. It's some microcrystalline. Drop the speed down a fraction. Uh, Steve Scott's saying his daughter's appointment's in the church. A set of carving tools and going to start to carve something. Thank you, Andy, for the inspiration you have provided. Yeah, there's some inspiration there, isn't there? He's a clever lad. Yeah. Uh, don't tell him, we don't want it going to his head. I haven't seen him in the chat. No. Uh, I think he's. A little bit iffy today, isn't he? Because they've lost one last night, I believe it was. Right, a little is more. So I've just literally wet the paper with the polish, the microcrystalline wax. Not too heavy handed with the paper. You don't want to take it off. 
talking of Andy uh, AH spoken his carving, go over and check out his Etsy page, guys. Um, he's got some awesome bits on there for sale. Uh, if I can, I shall find a link. I think they're all at a good price. Now, I'm just lightly dancing over this with the paper, making sure I get in the, the grooves that I've turned. I don't want an ultra high gloss on this, but I want a sheen. And I can always re-wax it if I decide I don't like the way it's turned up. I think my chat seems to have gone to sleep here. The last thing I've got is uh, from Gav. Adam's not going to sleep now. It's the last thing I've got in my chat. How's it? It's yours. Behaving. Yeah, I'm past that, mate. I've got Mark oh, here. here. Oh, here it comes now. Here it comes now, look. Yeah. I just got four in a row there. Okay. Five in a row is a bonus point, isn't it? Right, I'm going to part this off. I'm going to part off, not square, but up at an angle so that it sits on the outside edge. So, not a massive amount of volume. But, uh, let's turn the dust extractor on, suck those away from me. So, two cuts. I'm going in at about between 7 and 10 degrees so that it's got an edge. Down to about half an inch now. So I'm going to hold it just in case. As it's oak and old, it decides it wants to let go all of a sudden. There's a question from uh, Seth at Brickhouse Craftworks. Yes, I've just sir. ordered some Hampshire Sheen high gloss and micro crystalline waxes. Can mm -hmm. you give me some suggestions on when to choose one over the other? I wouldn't use the high gloss if you're using it over texture. Um, it does have a tendency just to stay in the uh, textured bit and turn white for some reason. Again, that's quite often because um, you've over-applied it. Much wax. Not every time, but... Uh, well, it, even Martin says it's a problem. Yeah. You can overcome that problem by using a hot air gun to remelt the wax and let it absorb into the wood. And that's what Martin does. And the other thing about the microcrystalline, it's more resistant to touching. Yeah. So it's an item that's going to be moved uh, about. Yeah. It was developed um, for museums so that they could um, coat a lot of um, marble and stuff like that that gets to everyone goes past and fondles it. That's nice. Yeah. So it was developed in collusion with the museums. This right. candle cup has got a hole in the bottom for a screw and I haven't got any small screws out here so it's going to wobble a bit tonight but there we have a candle yeah. let me come back to a different camera so um, that you can see it there's, there's a link for um, to face is three. Oh, the Etsy shop uh, and his Etsy shop The, the amount of stuff I've got in the shelves in my in my little office in the house, I might have to start an Etsy shop of my own, I think. <laughs> I've got a Made Me UK shop, um, which is very similar to Etsy. However, it's a lot cheaper. Um, All Etsy right. charge you on commission for every item you post. They charge you a listing fee. They 
Whereas Made Me UK is five pound a month for they did have a deal twenty five for the year. Um and the only thing you pay after that is uh one point three percent plus twenty pence to Stripe um that manage all the payments and stuff. All right. So Keep trading, not the best of pictures, but I will take some indoors and I shall actually screw the candle cup in so that the candle stops upright rather than wiggling around like a spare part. But that's very nice little project. Rubbishy old bit of oak, but a nice nice little project. Yeah. If anyone is interested in owning any of my work um i'll put the link up to my made me shop there is a sale on there that ends at midnight on sunday um it's been up all month like uh, brian i need to make some space <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't we all <laughs> so that's about it for tonight guys if anyone's got any questions fire them at me uh, Huey's asking, Keith, how old is that cool radio? That cool radio is um, 45, 50 years old. It's a um, marine brand one, as well as uh, conventional radio. Still works, works a treat. Uh, you have to warm the bells up, though, Huey. No, it's just minus a... Uh, it's just minus an aerial, but that's not bad for that age he's listening to a bit of Just a little bit yeah it's on radio too that's why because it picks up better in there i've got a tin roof on my shed on the workshop so i just have to be careful as to what i listen to without it disappearing uh, yeah good uh, radio that's been all program Not that. um, thanks for that Jim. james cassidy thank you for that i'll keep an eye on that he suggested we use Facebook's next door program. You get good response response from buyers. So I'll have a look at that if you want to sell some stuff as well. Hmm. Do we know Rich is invading tonight? Yeah, so um some is it can some Canadian guy? Not Louis. Tell us. No. No, it's uh it's a name I didn't recognise, and to be honest, I've been so tied up today with various things, bits and pieces, that I didn't get round to um, checking it out. No, 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 I, um, I can't find the link to the invasion on Rich's page, but there's yeah, well, a link. The guy with my Facebook page, you'll find it on there. Oh, right. there's a link to Rich's channel anyway. Uh, nine o'clock, guys. I won't be there because I've got some uh, jobs to do for the good lady. Uh huh. Dustman uh, are coming tomorrow, and I've been informed that the uh, Nan Stan uh, the people in the chat are saying Stan crafted. That's it. He makes yep. pipes. He makes oh. pipes, apparently. Okay. Uh, does, does that mean is that bite pipes or or smoking pipes or soil pipes? I don't know, but if you take the high road, I'll take the low road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, anyone got any questions in the last five minutes? Because if not, I'm going to uh, race off indoors, pour myself an ale. And, uh, sounds, like, sounds like a plan. Yeah, and get ready for Rich. I think I might just have a little brandy just to warm yeah. myself up after being little, in the shed. It's a bit cold. Little brandy, <laughs> I'd, I think I'd go for a big one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's no point in making the gla a glass wet just for a little one. <laughs> so, um, I'm also doing next Thursday. Scott's asked me to carry on doing the Thursdays for a couple of weeks uh, more so that he can get himself sorted out as to which way he wants to go, how he wants to do it. And we've also, um, Scott and I have also said that if he's on a late um, and, he, and he's free on a Tuesday lunchtime, he'll mm -hmm. take my Tuesday lunchtime and I'll do the Thursday. So we're going to swap it between the That's two good. of us. Cool. Um, Sounds like a plan. It, yeah, it right. keeps it easier and everyone knows what to, what to yeah. expect, either Scott or myself. But that won't be for another 
two or three weeks. Um, <laughs> he's not pushing himself, and I'm not pushing him out of it. We're just keeping it as as he wants to do it. So, I'm going to head off. Okay, yeah. mate. Thank you very much for tonight. Bye, bye, Scott. No Talk to you later, mate. Uh, see you all soon. Hey. Yeah, I'll probably touch base with you tomorrow or Saturday anyway. Oh, you don't. And I'll try and have another premiere out uh, beginning of next week. Yeah, if you got any chance of putting up a uh, um, father and son one, that would be appreciated. But uh, it's not critical. Yeah, I'll get that sorted as well, mate. All right. Yeah. See you okay, all mate. Later. Cheers, mate. Thanks, then. Some, Bye. Some really nice comments come up in the chat there, Keith. Yeah, well, um, I'm not sure what next Thursday will be, but it will be sort of tutorial again, as tonight's been. So we'll do a little bit of practice of something. Um, or I'll show you the way I do it, whether it's right. It works for me. But uh, I'm quite pleased the way this candle's come out. So just through dishing the top in there, you hide the candle cup. So you yep. just see the candle coming out the top. Um, you don't need to go in very far, but it just take just, if you don't, you see a bright piece of brass sitting on the top, which, you know, some people might like. But, uh, we can do, we can do red and we can do green. I've got both tonight showing <laughs> off. Yeah. But neither of them sit tight because of the candle cup once screwing in. But uh, I think it is a nice little project. So at least we made something. Yep. So Klondike has uh, just said it's still work out here, so no brandy for him. Oh. Did you feel in the branch in like Yes, um, Lewis. It's filled in. I've done an initial cut over it. And I'm just topping up the remaining holes. So it's had three attempts at filling it. It was filled with um, yew bark rather than the uh, milliput. I think now I would have been better off with the milliput, but hey ho, you learn. But uh, the bark. The yew bark dust is quite good for p filling in cracks in wood because it is wood. It was just that it, it, I hadn't minced it up quite fine enough. And to mince that up, you need a, the old-fashioned coffee grinder that you put your beans in and you mince them and then you pour it into the cafetiere or whatever it is they were called. I thought I'd got one in here, but... Uh, I've been looking around and it's possibly uh, gone walkabout now or it broke. So it's been recycled. <laughs> but uh, I did have one. But you can you can smash it up. You can grind it up. Um, food processor will probably smash it up as well. Colin from Wood Wizardry, ask you a question. Where do you get the cups from? Um, this one came from... Um, Turner's Retreat or somewhere like that I've since found them on eBay um, a lot cheaper so you can uh, shunt around oh Terry Jones is in I've just realised he's another club member thanks Terry, hope you enjoyed it mate James Castle uh, just said you can get the cups from Ax Axminster as well yeah you can get them from everywhere they have yeah. gone up extortionate now um i think the last time i looked they were in excess of a pound each from maxminster turner's retreat and places like that so you can get them cheaper through ebay but you have to buy a few more good old ebay says colin yeah well, that's good, what, good, that's good what old it's there chinese for, yeah 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 most of it's chinese of course Sure. Well, another... yeah, I'm not quite sure how it's going because some of the eBay prices have gone up quite considerably now. Um, I think it needs another few weeks for the imports exports to calm down a bit before we know what we've got. Yeah, That's I agree with that. I uh, agree with that. We refer to Keith as the Jedi. Uh, now I can't take that uh, that away from Wayne. 
No, he's not the Jedi. He's the wizard. He's the wizard, is he? He's Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me what you like. Most people do. I, I'm not worried. Um, as long as you guys have learnt a bit from it, seen a different way of perhaps of doing it, Pack of Fire from Axminster is 348. Gee. That's not too bad then. But uh, you've got to factor that in to the price of the candlestick if you're selling them. Bye, Douglas. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Douglas. Douglas Mongham. See, yeah, I'll see you next uh, next Tuesday. I'll hopefully see all you guys next Tuesday. Um, I'm going to sign off now because I want to get in, pour myself a beer before um, Rich comes on. So thank night, you all. Everybody. Thank you all for coming and, in. Uh, I'm going to... If the mouse works, end the broadcast now. Hopefully see you all next Thursday, if not next Tuesday. Tuesday is lunchtime, 1 o'clock. Next Thursday is 7.30 again, so won't have any late entries. Um, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs>